Hello, and welcome to Magic and Mysticism, the podcast, starring Tommy Burnett, New York City's favorite mind reader, where each week he talks to different mystery performers from around the world. This week's guest is world-renowned mentalist, Guy Bodley. So sit back, relax, and now, allow me to introduce your host, Mr. Tommy Burnett. Hey everyone, welcome to a another edition of sorry, I gotta turn the volume off. Um welcome to season two, episode nine of Magic and Mysticism, the podcast. I'm your host, Tommy Burnett, New York's favorite mind reader. Coming to you live today from New York City. Now you're either watching this from Facebook, YouTube or Twitch, and no matter where you're watching from, I'm happy you're here. I'm so excited about today's guest. He's a professional mechanist who has appeared on over 500 TV shows in over 50 countries around the world. In 1996, he successfully predicted the outcome of the Israeli general election on primetime live TV in Israel, two weeks before the election even took place. He has performed at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, California, Carnegie, Carnegie Hall right here in New York City, and at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. In 2007, he performed many mechanism effects of the NBC television show Phenomenon, including metal bending, a wrestling roulette routine with hydrochloric acid, and stopping his own heart. He is moving out, and I'm proud to have him on the show today. His name is Guy Badley, but before I bring him on, I want to show you a quick clip from a uh, a, a talk that he did a number of years ago. Yeah, I I love the opening here, and I, I'm sure you will too. You sit down very tired from the whole day, uh-huh. and all you want is the Martin to give you maybe a, a drink, a glass of wine or a coffee. You don't want to go to the kitchen. Right. And then you think about it, and you really concentrate and think about it, and then an epiphany happened. Right. What happened? He brings me a drink. No, you look at him and he's asleep. Oh. Yeah. It happens true. too. <laughs> yes. So now I'm going to solve the problem. I will connect this couple together. Can you please stand here, Jill? Right. Jill, right? right? And Martin, can you please stand here? Extend your hand to the front. Extend your hand to the front. Now turn around to your husband. Turn around to your wife. Uh, turn your hand palm up. Touch each other. I want you to look each other in their eyes. Martin, look at Jill. Jill, look at Martin. Remember all the 16 years and many more other things that you've been together. Uh, remember the family. Remember anything, all the good, and the many years to come, because I will connect both of you mentally, physically, romantically, and telepathically, starting right now. <laughs> Kumbaya. <laughs> Can you please stand over here? Can you please stand over there? Thank you so much. You feel the chills? Yeah. Feel the chills in the microphone? No, you don't understand what happened. They are connected. What you see, he sees. What he sees, you feel. You are connected. Not anymore Martin and Jill. You're Margil. All right? Now, Jill, can you stand over here? Extend your hands to me, just like that. Okay, fantastic. And close your eyes. I, I will touch you a few times. I just want to make sure that you can feel me. Okay? okay? Mm-hmm. Do you feel that I touch you? Mm-hmm. How many times? Two. Two times? Wait, 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 wait. Put your hands. Put your hands. Uh, and do you feel? Close your eyes. Do you feel? How many times? Two. Two times. That's very good. Take your hands down. Take your hands down. Now, Jill, mm-hmm. I want you both to connect. Open your eyes. You are going to be the sender you are going to be the receiver, all right? Uh, I'm going to give you, for that matter, here, two boards, the sender, the receiver, okay? It's just to see if we can work together, because otherwise, maybe we can't, okay? So the sender, can you take that, please? Fantastic, and the receiver, can you take that? That's great. Stand like that, okay? A marker for you, and a marker for you. 
I want you to look at her, then look at the board, and I want you to write a number. Look at her, and look at the board. Good. And write the number big and clear. You have to think about a number and write it clear from 1 to 50. 1 to 50, okay? Write a number from 1 to 50. Then we will see if we have a commonality between them. Now, if he thinks about 50 and she thinks about 4, it is close. <laughs> All right. Did you, did you write? Did you write a number? Yeah. Big? I'll take the marker. I'll take the marker. That's fantastic. That's uh, write it big. Write it big. Oh, big. Big, big. Yeah, we all want to see it. Write it big. And today. <laughs> we have. Okay. So, um, ready? Uh, show your number. Show your, no, don't show it yet. Show the number to everybody here. Everybody yeah, here. yeah, over there. Okay, let's see. Can you show your number? It was close. It's close. Is that right? Not right. We are. What is it? One off. One off. But you see, sometimes you have to be prepared. Um, can you just take this and uh, open it up? Open it up. Can you show anyone? You have to predict that sometime these things happen. Give them a big round of applause. See? All right. So uh, I, think, I think I can work with you. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce Mr. Guy Bavley. Hi, Guy. Oh, can't hear you. Hey, Tommy, can you oh, hear me now? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, yes. All right. No, I, I, I just controlled the ears of everybody that they won't yes. be able to hear me, but then I just went back to your mind and reopened it. Yes. How are you? Pleasure to be I'm, here. I'm, Thank I'm, you very much for having me. Thank you for being here. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Uh, it's I interesting think. that from all, the, from all the videos, you chose this one. Wow. And I, and I want to ask, now I'm the host. Why yeah. did you choose this one? I, well... I was trying to find one that would be a good opener. Um, okay. And, and no, no, was, I haven't and, seen that for ages, so I that, know, that, I know. that was refreshing. It, it, it was a while ago. I actually, uh, I used to do something similar. Um, not, I'm sure it was just different method, um, but um, I, I, I love your presentation of it, so... I thought it Thank would you. Be, no, that that was the, yeah. the funny thing with me that this was the warm up of the routine. The routine didn't even started yet. Exactly. Right? <laughs> it, 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 it keeps going. And, 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 it's um, keeping going. Yeah, that's the problem yeah, with me. Um, I keep going all the time. No, 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 no. no I, I purposely chose that to tell the audience who's ever watching to go check out the rest of it on YouTube because um, the whole sure. thing is. The whole thing is a beautiful uh, PK. Thank you, thank you. And, yeah, 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 that was in yeah. that was in Canada in uh, uh, Idea City, uh, yeah. which is a big conference they do every year. It was really pleasure, nice people, amazing audience, and yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah. yeah. So what's yeah. happening with you, Tommy? So you know, um, I I have this podcast. I'm starting to do live shows again, so that's good. I have. Uh, Sure. To get people to um, hire me again um, live, so that's good. Um, but this isn't about me today. This is about you. Oh, it's always about you. <laughs> so it's about them. It's about the viewers, yeah. uh, whoever is yeah. watching you. Yes, it is. And yes, it is. by the way, I'm I, I'm looking at the screen. And I see the light is flickering behind, and I think it's something to do with your uh, exposure. So, but uh, I'm not oh. going to spend the time. To, to disconnect the Wonderful. lights there. Okay. But in the worst case, no, no, it's fine. But in the worst case, because it doesn't happen on my camera. Okay. But uh, in the worst case, that will be kind of induction for hypnosis for those who want to relax a little bit and go yeah. to sleep. <laughs> uh, just look look at the camera and all the flickering like that and off it go. Okay. <laughs> I I can't see anything, but, but I... I, I trust you and um that's fine that's fine yeah, i'm just yeah ju just wanted to 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 say it in case somebody's paying attention like me you see 
uh, I my eyes is like uh, ears dog. I look yeah. at things that nobody else uh, look and uh, yeah. it's one of my 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 advantages and one of my enemies is my details. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I So I, talk I, to I, me. I'm here for you. Me. Yes. So how how did you get started in in mechanism? Did you Oh wow. Start, yeah. That was Many, many years ago, uh, I was, uh, I mean, I, I loved magic since I was born, I guess, not really, maybe a few weeks later, but um, I, I was I was very fat when I was a child, I was obese, um, and as an obese child in school, people bully you, it's not uh, a big pleasure, they always call your name and do whatever they want, mm -hmm. and uh, all I wanted is kids to see me the way I am inside and not how I am from the outside. Yeah. Uh, the good thing that I had, I had sense of humor, and I was very outgoing, and I didn't, I didn't have a problem to make fun of myself, but I didn't like people to make fun of me. Mm -hmm. If you, know. um, so, yeah. So I didn't know how to do it. it. Was like every other child and many other magicians, I believe. But um, I, I couldn't that I can ever be a superhuman because superhuman has you know all this perfect body and a six sack a six uh, a pack and all I had was a one pack you know so I couldn't really identify you're going to be a superhuman and a superhero and you're going to fly one day but one day I went to um, a bazaar with the, my family my mother and hold and behold there was a magic uh, stand there somebody sold magic and I, I was not exposed to that before. I mean, I saw magicians, and at that time also I, I was a kind of a fan. I heard about Uri Geller that was born in Israel, because I'm originally from Israel, right. and that was in the 70s. So we didn't have a lot of resources, so I really begged to get one trick, and uh, I had to choose. And the first trick I ever bought was the telepathic cube, you know, with the color and the box mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that you yeah, put yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, uh, which is which is funny when I think about it. Uh, Forty five years later, that um, it's it's a mind reading trick. It's not visual, but I chose that one, which is kind of yeah. odd. I, I don't think that a lot of kids would choose that one. There were many others. Yeah. So I took it home, practiced a lot, a lot, a lot. Showed it to my neighbors and my family, and then I took it to school and I showed it to one friend, and he loved it. And then he called another friend, and they called another friend. All of a sudden kids started to come to me and say, can you show me? Can you show me? And I felt special. And for the first time, they see me as I am, as a guy and not as the fat guy. Right. So that's how I really started. And, uh, you know, uh, I think maybe a month or so, a few weeks later or whenever, I collected a little bit more chores and did good in school or whatever and convinced my, my family to buy me the entire box. And then I had plenty of other things, and I start practicing and practicing. Uh, my father, may he rest in peace, uh, um, he was a pilot in an airline. Mm -hmm. So then uh, later on, you know, when I was older, uh, he found Louis Tannen in, in the 80s, in the beginning of the 80s in New York. I think it was the beginning yeah. of the 80s yeah. in Broadway. Mm -hmm. So he started to bring me stuff from there and the big catalog, if you remember, <laughs> there was this, this yeah, thick yeah, yeah. of magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, this, is, this is basically how I started. And then in 85 and 86, I went to the magic camp, the Tannins magic camp on my own. So I was a very big teenage there. Uh, I did the competition. I won the award and made a lot of friends and, and met a lot of big names that I've always, you know, read in books and watching TV. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. You know, yeah. I can get, go on and on and on, but uh, that's in a really short phase. Yeah. Wow. That's very really cool. I remember going, going to Cannes when I think I was about 15 or 16 years old, and you got on the elevator and it took you up there, and when the doors opened... That's the shop. Right, yeah, and it, it was the most amazing thing i ever seen in my life. Um, I must tell you that uh, I, I, um, I was a very good, you know, because I was a good client, at some point when I started to perform more, my, my first commercial show was when I was eight years old. This is where I mm -hmm. got my first 
you know, shekel, whatever it was, right. you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but because my father went to Tannins, he needed, he loved magic, but he always came to bring me stuff, or I flew with him once a year. I became a good friend, probably because I was a good client with Tony Spina. He yeah. was the owner at that yeah. time of Tannins, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. And he, I had access to the office with all those pictures and, mm -hmm. and you know, looking at the drawers. So he just let me in, you know. He just said, oh, yeah, go go inside, go ahead. Because he knew in the end I would write a good check. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and I stayed in touch with him until uh, very lately that he passed away. Yeah, unfortunately. When he passed away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and to, to turn a circle around, I mean, of course, uh, um, Tannins was sold. Right. I very recently, maybe two months ago, I was in New York and my good friend Lior Manor, which mm -hmm. I grew up with. You know, yeah. I know Lior for over 35 years. Wow. Um, wow. He was in the city in the same day that I was in the city. And he said, let's go to, to Louis Tannen. So we both went to Tannen, you know, today's Tannen. Right. And it, yeah. I must say, you know, I visit there every every now and then when I'm in New York. Yeah. But yeah. it was a very emotional um, visit for me. Because mm. all of a sudden you open, you know, it was you don't open the envelope, but now you have a right. big hallway and then you go yeah. in. But there is something there that brought us this youth, this, this mystery, mm. this this mm. this is we grew up. This is this was the source for us to get the magic, and it was yeah. nice to see some two kids came in and their father stayed there and looked at them, and I saw myself as a child with my father in the <laughs> shop. It was a great memory. So you know. Uh. Yeah. Uh, go support uh, you know, you know, brick and wall magic yeah. shops. Yeah. Uh, very important. Yeah. It's a part yeah. of history. It really is. Yeah. I was there not so long ago. I was there maybe three weeks ago. Um, and you were? It was, yeah. Yeah. It was definitely a. Uh, a uh, May a may say in 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 my heart, and because yeah, I I met I met Tony Spina as well when I when I was a teenager, and and he was always very nice to me, and he let he let me go in the back, um, and um, he let everybody go in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But um, I I I'm looking time. I'm looking here if I can find I have a video. Of me okay. and Lior in the shop, but uh, continue. I, I'm just looking here. If yeah, I can yeah, find yeah. it very quickly, yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah. If not, then uh, okay. I will. Yeah, fine. Um, yeah, I, I was just going to say that I I remained in touch with Tony until uh, shortly shortly before he passed away as well, and um, he, he he will be missed. Um, was he guy. was a great, a great character. Uh, yeah. Here, this is me and Lior, Lior Manor, at yeah. Tannins, uh, oh, cool. <laughs> about two months ago, a little bit less. Yeah, wow. Wow. we took some videos showing around. Yeah. yeah, you know what? I forgot to put it on my Instagram. I should, but oh, yeah, telling all should. the stories. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Anyway. Uh. <laughs> I, I mean, hey, it's I mean, a magic podcast, so why not uh, exactly, talking yeah, about yeah, uh, things like that? Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I mean, I'm sure this was not planned, right? It wasn't. No, a, a, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of what happens on here is not planned. Um, um, I, I try and keep keep the uh, uh, format open, so whatever. Sure, happens, sure. No, I, I let you lead, yeah. but sometimes you know. I'm just flying away. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so I, I'm sure in your career, you've um, met a lot of a lot of other musicians. Um, is and, and Michael's. Is there any one in particular that you haven't met that um, that you would like to meet? That I haven't met. Wow, that's a yeah. great question. Yeah. 
Uh, well, you know, I was I was waiting for the point to say who's your favorite from who you met, but I didn't I think about I, who you did. Coming up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I was a big fan, but I never never met him. Doug Henning. Mm -hmm. um, I was really a big fan of Doug Henning, and uh, I just never met him. Uh, I met many others, and some of them were very good friends. Uh, some of them I met a few times, some of them we became close friends, you know, sending letters, meeting in conventions, going to a dinner together. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would say Doug is probably somebody that I would have loved to meet and I've never met because he, he had something special and something very unique about his art. Yeah. And I appreciate it very much. I'm a big believer of presentation, of personality before any magic comes to line. I think magic and, and, and anything else, techniques is secondary. Yes, without them, you know, we don't have a punchline, but our personality helps selling them. So um, it's like anything else. If you have a great product and you're a, you know, a bad salesperson, nobody will buy from you. So you have to be a good salesperson to sell a good product, also a bad one. But I, 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 I really always wanted to uh, to meet Doug, Doug Henning. Never happened. So yeah, yeah, me too. Actually, I remember seeing him in um, the the magic show on Broadway. I was like, I think eleven or twelve years old, and um, yeah, I always wanted to meet him. Um, so we we'll go back to. The question that you thought was coming up: uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who were your influences? Who was my influences? Yeah. Um, well, there, there's many. As a child, um, of course, Uri Geller, in a way, because mm -hmm. uh, you know he opened my eyes to what is a, a superhuman but it's a, a tangible one, not one with a logo, not one like the magicians in the 70s. They all had these hats and this, right. but he was right. just a normal person doing amazing things. So I wanted to be also a normal person doing amazing things. Yeah. Um, one of my biggest influences as a child was Charlie Chaplin, actually, mm. uh, because he wasn't a magician, but I loved his comedy, his timing, and his artistic point of view. And in a way, he was a mentalist because he never said a word, but everybody understood what he said, mm. you know, in his early films. Because you could see it in his eye. You could understand it from his slapsticks. So Charlie Chaplin is one of them. Uh, Mentalism-wise, big influence for me is David Berglas, uh, which, yeah. happy to say, you know, he's still a good friend, uh, still in touch with him. In fact, I was just emailing with him this week. Uh, wow. Great, great personality, an amazing gentleman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took a lot from him, uh, from his career, from his thinking. And he's a, just a wonderful person. Um, and as for me, I think also one of the biggest one is Roni Shachnai. He was my mentor. Uh, uh -huh. He was Lior's Manor, Lior Manor's mentor as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a, a, an Israeli magician. Um, Great magician, but even more than that, an amazing teacher that mm. taught me how to think. You know, we didn't have resources in Israel when I was a child. We didn't have magic shops that were worthwhile. You know, it was all very sleazy, you know. And yes, we yeah. visit there, but yeah. you, you reach a limit. If you want to grow, it's either you go abroad. And thank God I had my father that went back and forth. But a lot yeah. of time, he didn't teach me tricks. He taught me how to think and how to build mm. and how to do. And, you know, if you look at me now, many years forward, um, I, I build most of the stuff that I work with. And if I don't build it, then people build it to my specs. And right. also the things, you know, under Bakure, a lot of things, the things that you can do yourself. We just tell you how to do it. And it's right. okay. I think yeah. it opens yeah. the mind. Yeah. So Ronnie, unfortunately, I lost him a few years ago. He was like my father. I'm still in touch with his wife. And he, he lived in England in the last years. Uh, so he was a big influence. Uh, Paul Daniels was a big influence for me. 
Mm -hmm. Met him a few times. I even gave him an award once. I was hosting a magic convention, so that was a big yay at that wow. time. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Wilson was a big influence. Copperfield, like everybody else, you know, yeah. those are like untouchable talents, talented. Right. But right. I can go on and on and on and on. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> There are so many of good good names that yeah. Uh, yeah. you 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 know you take something from each person. Even, even Blackstone, which I've met, and I'm a very good friend with Gay, mm -hmm. and actually me and my wife. And uh, I met Blackstone, I think it was in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. Charming person. And, you know, his magic was completely different than mine. But right. throughout my career, I took some things from him. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, it's like in music. You can hear a jazz music and you like the sound of the guitar, it doesn't mean that you have to take it and play jazz with it. You can play something else if you if it spikes an idea for you, if you like yeah. the style, if you like the sound. So yeah. I took a lot from him too. So uh, there's a lot of them. And I'm sure I'm missing a lot too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what is your... I'm sure you have a lot of these. But what is your favorite highlight in your in your career? Uh, wow, there are so many of them because as you grow, your standards are changing. Right. My my first highlight was my first regular gig when I was like eight or nine years old, in a, in a swimming pool every Saturday morning, eleven o'clock in, in the morning. Wow. Why? Because I was I just wanted to perform and somebody booked me for the entire summer. I was big and and you know and I, I was tall, so I looked maybe 13 or 14. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was performing as a child, probably yeah. very underpaid. Uh, so for me that was a highlight. And then another highlight was for me to perform abroad. And my first booking was uh, for a company in Austria. Uh, and that was also an achievement, a milestone. Wow. And now I, I work internationally because I always wanted to work internationally. Mm -hmm. And this led, actually, this client is still my client until today for so many years. Uh, you know, and I have very, I have few clients that I'm still with them in like nearly 30 years. Uh, another great um, achievement was the Magic Castle. Nobody right. knew who I am. And all of a sudden, I was asked to come and do a lecture because they didn't want to book me for a show. They didn't know how my show is, but they heard about, I guess, my ideas. Mm -hmm. And I, I must thank uh, Amos Levkovich. May he rest in peace, my good buddy. Um, he was the one, you know, telling them, you need to look at that. And then they looked at that and invited me. So that was a huge, um, uh, you know, benchmark in my life. Because yeah. I'm just a 20-year-old nobody from Israel. And right. all of a sudden, they invite me to perform, at the magic, to, to lecture at the Magic Castle. Wow. And the room was packed. Uh, yeah. People sat yeah. on the floor. And everybody was there from, from Mark Wilson and T.A. Waters. And, wow. and you name it, they were there, you know. So for me, it was like, oh, my God. Uh then it was Caesar Palace, which, which I worked there for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So that was another. So every time you have something, you know, uh, that tops it and another one that tops it. So there's a lot of them. You know, when you have many years of career, you collect a lot of memories. Of course, of course, yeah. Um, so my, my, my next question is, one of my favorites uh, is not always a favorite of the people I ask, but uh, what is the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you during a performance? Wow. I performed and fell off stage in the middle of the show. Oh, wow. Uh, that was in a in an event for a school event in in a school um, basketball uh, stadium of the school. So there were a lot of people, you know, sitting like that, and they actually 
we're videotaping this show and um, I I just went back and I didn't pay attention and the 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 strange thing is and I think my my is it my oh now I'm in in focus and the stage was had a layer of vinyl that covers the stage as a decoration and then go up 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 to the ceiling and then they connected there so that was kind of the setting but oh. I didn't see I didn't see they didn't mark where, where the edge of the stage is. So I went back, but there was no edge. The good thing is that I fell down. I I, know, I remember seeing the entire audience turning around like that. Wow. And I, I did, you know, I did magic at that time. I was very young, I was a teenage. Yeah. And uh, I did magic and I always did a little bit of mentalism as well. Because you know, as a as a teenage and child, you, you don't really know where is your uh, direction. Yeah. So I fell with a linking ring. I had huge linking ring that I learned from Ronnie Shachnai. This was his signature act. I still have mm. these linking rings. Mm. Amazing wow. set. Uh, this is like yeah. for me forever. Wow. And uh, I just fell down. And I felt like I'm on trampoline because it was all vinyl. Mm -hmm. Thank God I didn't destroy the, the... It didn't disconnect from the ceiling because then it right. will smash me or who knows. Wow. But I just... Found my, I, I, you know, I just rolled back after whatever and made some faces and went like that. Everybody were cheering, and I continued <laughs> yeah. the show. Yeah. And after the show, I went down. And I said, "Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you go like that." I said, "Damn it, you know, <laughs> shouldn't happen." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, that's 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 one of them. Okay. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good one. Um, I, I'm very glad that um, nothing bad happened to you. Um, um, the what? I, I'm glad that nothing bad happened to you. Like, no, 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 no. Nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing yeah. bad happened to me. But yeah. you know, things yeah. happen throughout the career. So many stories. But you know, we can all make a whole sitcom out of it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And there's just one thing that uh, came in mind. Perfect. Um, where is the coolest place you've ever performed? Um, like uh, mm. venue, venue, city, country. You know what? Every place I've I've traveled a lot, and I've been in many, many, many countries. Every country has something special about it, and it doesn't have to be the most glamorous uh, thing. Um. I mean, there's there's famous places that I worked with that I was very happy and you know kind of like for example the presidential palace in uh, in Vietnam or uh, in the uh, what do you call it uh, um, the Spielhaus Theater the Spielhaus I think Spielhaus in in, in Salzburg which mm -hmm. is a big big thing and the Opera House in in uh, in Frankfurt. You know, there's just venues that are big and all the big. Ah, oh, and there you go. Uh, I did a show in Carnegie Hall. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just went there and, you know, stand next to the piano and maybe it was uh, Frank Sinatra's room. You know, who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, but that was something that uh, was crazy for me because I was 26 and uh, wow. it was a fundraising event and one person canceled and they saw me two weeks before and they asked me if I can do it. And I said yes without even looking at my calendar. <laughs> wow. Wow. Because you don't get those uh, many opportunities. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody asks you, you call it y'all. You don't say no. <laughs> yeah. So did yeah. that, done that. Wow. I have a picture. Wow. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started asking people recently, what is your process for coming up with a new routine? For me, for me, it was always, um, there, there's a few ways to approach it. Most of the time, for me, it is necessity when you need something. I need to do this. 
I don't like this method, I don't like that method, or I can't find a method, or I just want to do this, but I don't know how. So mm -hmm. many times, and many of my routines come from this. Mm -hmm. Others, they just come from artistic inspiration. You've seen something in the street, then you thought it would be cool if I do this and this and this with something like that. You know, there's a lot of process of, uh, of thinking like every artist, like, like writing music. Sometimes you can sit down and you start composing and music will start, the song will be finished within 10 minutes. And sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it takes hours because you're stuck in this loop and you said, no, I need to change this and I need to change that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, majority, I would say, is having good imagination and also necessity. What do you want to do? Don't think about, you know, I always start with, from the effect first and okay. then I reverse engineer it backwards rather than taking an effect and building on it. Sometimes you do. Well, it's a great effect, but sometimes I don't. That makes sense. Um, it's true. Honest truth. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all we're asking. <laughs> um, so, how has uh, COVID and quarantine affected you as a performer? Well, it affected everyone, you know, from hero to zero. Right. And, um, you know, it started with a shock. And then you tell yourself, nah, it's a matter of a few weeks. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We can survive. Maybe by next month we'll be okay. And then you understand it's not. And then you have a choice in life. Either you stand in place and you just wait for everything to move or you create your own destiny and you dig in and you say we must find something to do now i know how to do shows i'm an entertainer i'm a mentalist or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. but i didn't have um, tools what do you do how do you work virtually you right. know right so um, so then uh, I always in touch with my buddies, uh, Chaim Goldenberg and Amir Lustig, and many others, of course. Yeah. But we work very closely for many, many years. And we start bouncing ideas. Look at this. I, I, I did this and I can do that. With You know, we were on Zoom. One is in Israel, one is in Canada, I'm in Florida. You can't leave the house. And we start coming up, each one, with something, you know, different. An idea and then we shared it with other friends and people flipped out they said what the hell is this how is it working and everybody said can i can i do it too can i use it too so then we understood there is people are panicked people don't have income we have to to help so and and this is you know for me you know bakure was born then and uh, Bakura Magic, mm -hmm. and it kept me very much busy. Not only, you know, not from the financial point of it, because we all right. know you don't make my money from <laughs> creating magic. Uh, right. It's just covering your basic expenses. Yeah. But um, it helped me gather ideas for me. It kept me sane, talking to my friends every single day, developing, yeah. developing, yeah. developing, perfecting, developing. And it put food on my table because I used this to perform, right. uh, which I did many virtual shows. So um, it's like it was a very bad lemon that we succeeded making it into a nice lemonade. Um, of course, I missed live shows, but you have to take, you know, you have to move with the cheese and not to keep digging the wall if there is no cheese there. Because then you will just die from hunger. Right, right. You know, if you read the book. Uh, yeah. So um, that's basically it. It was a very challenging, you know, from anything, like everybody else, psychologically, financially, um, family, wife. You know, there's so many elements to the, to the puzzle. Reinventing yourself from scratch. 
But my biggest thing that I'm really proud of is that um, me and my friend could help thousands of, of other magicians and mentalists uh, mm -hmm. making a living, you know? And that's something that made us very, very happy. Yeah. <coughs> well, I, I, for one, I for one thank you all because um, you definitely helped me out. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, um, so you basically, uh, it, uh, it, you basically alluded to the fact that Buckler Mather started out, out of necessity. Um, yeah. Um, he started you, because of us. Yeah. We right. needed solution for us. We were panicked, right. like right. everybody else. And anyway, we develop our own stuff. And, you know, even if we do known routines, there's always a spin or something. It's just because it has to fit my personality. Right. And my personality is different than Chaim, different than Amir. So right. we are so different from each other, which makes it very special because we all tackle it from a different angle. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> it all started because we, we were panicked for us. And our closest friends saw it and everybody wanted it. And we saw that people just need content. People need solutions. People need a way so they can make a living, you know? Yeah. And, and that's basically what it is. Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess now is a good time to uh, give a plug for um, Bachelor and Magic. I, I got to say that one thing I love about your products is that you um, you all share your own point your own point of view and your own yeah. your, your own uh, presentations of of sometimes of the same effect. Sometimes you have your own ideas, like in um, the BM the BM project. Um, the BM project, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, without giving anything away, you all have your own, you came up with your own presentations that are different from one another. And, and they're, they're all beautiful. I, I, I love them all. Thank you. Um, uh, and this is also the process, you know, we, we come up with a principle, we have the basic effect or two. And then we go and each one is creating a routine for himself or two mm -hmm. or three or depends. Mm -hmm. And then we like it or we don't like it. Um, you know, we, we, we have so many, we, we released, I don't know, maybe 20 effects or 15 or 20 effects in a little bit over a year. It's a lot. Yeah. 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 All of these things were not, <clears throat> did not exist before COVID. It's not like we took something from the draw and, it just came up because we were working very hard every day we met. Wow. Uh, and, and it became, it's like work. We were very disciplined. Every day we had our regular hours. We sit down for two or three hours, Zoom, sometimes twice a day. And it was very intense. But we had a mission and we wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see that nowadays we have probably... I would say another 20 effects in our draw that wow. we either didn't have time to do or we didn't feel that we're there yet. Even virtual touches, we worked about it long, long before, you know, mm -hmm. so, uh, but it took us a long time to start perfecting it, trying to, it's not just the method, it's the storyline. Yeah. It's, it's everything, yeah. you know, that you want to do with it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Oh, this is the website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Oh, sorry, here it is. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. yeah. Um yeah, I ha uh, highly recommend it to anybody watching. Um they have some really cool effects. Um most recently I I posted the uh uh A, A project. The A project, yeah, um, with yeah. Nicolas Mavresis, with, yeah. in collaboration with yeah. him, yeah. Yeah, who, uh, uh, Nicholas is coming on the show, um, I think in two weeks, two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Great guy, yeah. very creative. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I've we've actually performed online together um, um, at an open mic. Um, he, he was he was testing out he was testing out um, a project, and um, I I didn't know what it was at the time, and. Mm-hmm. It, it, blew, it blew me, blew me away. <laughs> it blew it's me phenomenal because you yeah. can do it's it's yeah. it's very close but completely different to the BM. Yeah. It's not yeah. a trick, it's yeah. a principle. Exactly. You know, yeah. once you yeah. know the principle, you can yeah. do anything you want. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and we like things like that. Uh, yeah. we call it utility items. It's right. an item yeah. that you can do so many things with. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's very versatile, um, uh, and that's what I like about most of your products is um, they're versatile. Even. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I highly recommend go go to um, www.bakermagic.com and uh, get yourself some really good stuff um <laughs> thanks <laughs> here's the plug-in here we go <laughs> here we go <laughs> um okay i can buy fries to my daughter today there you go. yay there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep that's about it <laughs> i can relate i can relate um let me see. Um, let's see. I forgot my question. Uh, oh yeah. Again, this is probably my my favorite question and very important and dear to my heart. Um, what is one way you can make a deep and meaningful connection? with your audience wow there's so many ways let's start with personality who you are is the understanding of who you are as a performer Mm -hmm. you know you have to be honest with yourself and not to be somebody else if you admire for example david copperfield it's great. Take what you can from him, but do it your way. Uh, many times, and, and Copperfield is just one way. He's a great guy and a friend. And uh, but many many magicians they try to be somebody else, and it looks great, but it's not hundred percent honest. In many mm-hmm. ways, some you know I cannot talk about everybody because everybody is unique, of course. Right. One way to create a connection is to be true to yourself, know your limitation, and know your advantages. If you're yes. funny, make them laugh. If you're not funny, don't even try, because yeah. it's not going to work. You know, so you have to be critic to critique yourself. The second thing is be honest. And I know it's a very big thing to say in in our art as right. mystifiers, right? Because yeah. uh, you know what we do is, you know, effects and make believe and psychology and tricks and there's <laughs> a lot of manipulation there. Right. But when I perform, I believe in what I do. I get into that moment, and if something happened for me, <clears throat> sorry, it is as if. It happened really, and I don't know what it, you know, right. it's gone. Right. You know, rather than it's gone. Because, right. you know, but it works for me, my personality. Yeah. yeah. It's it's gone. Well, no, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's, yeah. you know, so yeah. I feel honest this way because I believe in it. So yeah. even if I know that, you know, it's not really gone and it went to my sleeve or to my ear or to my nose or to my pocket, it doesn't matter what it is. Right. Just to give an example, I don't really make things appear right. and disappear yeah. as a mentalist. Right. And I, well, I haven't well, done it for 30 yeah. years. But so, you know what well, I mean. Yeah. Be but real. Same thing with bending a spoon. Or, or, um... It doesn't matter what it is. 
a car trip, anything, you know, be you. Oh. If you are the kind of guy that, that likes to do this, that's fine. Yeah. That it fits you. But make sure it fits you and you don't do it because of somebody else. Or if you're the kind of guy that uh, is all the time losing and getting doing mistakes, it's fine. If yeah. that's you, go with it. Yeah. Play on it. Because, you know, sorry for the expression, but audience is not stupid and it doesn't take bullshit. Yeah. yeah. The minute you start to bullshit them, they might not know exactly what, but they can, they can smell it. Yeah. The more authentic you will be, the more connection you will have. And that's my my biggest uh, advice, I would say, um, you know, from my experience. And of course, I talk for me, might be different for you. It's only a, my personal opinion. No, uh, I agree wholeheartedly. For me, it's me being being genuine. Yes, being, being genuine. Authentic. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah being authentic. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, Absolutely. This is my, uh, our probably mutual friend, um, Kenton Nepper. Um, apparently he was watching and he says I have to jump over to be interviewed myself elsewhere, but I wanted to send my very best to you both. So that was nice. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was Kenton Nepper. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Thank you. That's Kenton. wonderful. Yeah. Kenton yeah. Is, Kenton is my mentor and friend of. Uh, he's wonderful. Yeah. He is wonderful. Ten years. Yeah. Um. He's a great guy. Very creative. And yeah. 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 Um. Let's see. What else do I want to ask? Um. Ah. This is a good one. Um. What is one thing you would recommend to someone entering uh, entering magic and and or mechanism for the first time? Okay, I'm a big believer. You know, I have I have kids. I have older kids in college. I have a younger kid. You know, so I never push my kids to do anything. I let them find their own path. I will guide them. I will give them the solutions. I will help them. Sure. And I was very fortunate. You know, uh, my mother is a very Polish mother. Like every mother, of course, she wanted me to be a lawyer or a doctor. And I end up being a magician and a mentalist. And that's what I do for <laughs> my entire life. You know, I never yeah. had a real job. Yeah. So uh, first of all, always follow your dream, follow your passion. Don't be a magician because you want to make money. Because you want. Uh, don't, um, don't be also a doctor if you want to make money. Because, you, you know, you might make money, but you'll be miserable if you don't have the passion for it. Do whatever yeah. makes you passion. Magic for me was the hobby, became my profession. I didn't look for anything else. I studied a million things in my life, uh, but not in order to get a degree, but in order to know. So it can help me in what I do. Mm -hmm. So I took things seriously, which is another thing. Once you go into your something that you want to create a career, if it's magic, go study deeply and invest your money and time in resources rather than uh, another trick, another trick, another trick, another trick, another trick. Yeah. A trick is wonderful and, and you need them to do a show. But mm -hmm. knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. If you can have a, a mentor that can guide you, I had a mentor, changed my life. I, I owe, owe Ronnie Shachnei my entire career. Um, wow. Also, it's very important to have a, something to fall on because mm -hmm. magic is unsteady. So I always say, you know, go do college, do good, you know, study something that you will have a day job if you need to because you yeah. might find out yeah. that magic is too stressful for you is what mm -hmm. is the lifestyle you can make a lot of money as a magician or mentalist but yeah. you can also not like any yeah. other business in life showbiz is very very challenging yeah so you know if you're young do school do college and do magic and use the magic 
in order to succeed in the places you are. Do a show in the college, do an essay about the history of magic, connect it to your life. Use your profession to your own, just like, for example, my buddy Leo Manor. He was right. a mathemati 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 mathematician, you call it? Right. Yes. He is mm -hmm. a genius. Yeah. He, he teached me math when I was in high school. Wow. You know, because my grades <laughs> went down and Ronnie told me, I'm right. not teaching you. Right. And he was a student and he teached me math so I can do good in my grades so I can keep doing wow. magic. Wow. But he took his, his, his degree and he made it he implemented into the magic. But without wow. without having the degree, he wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. So it's always very good to, to fall back. But in general, be you, be yourself, and follow your passion. Follow your heart and always think with your head. And knowledge is power. Always knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And don't share. I mean, I'm, of course, friends and stuff, but I mean, you know, today with all the piracy and bit, be genuine and respect also the the... the the people who give you. Yeah. I see a lot of magicians that, uh, uh, oh, this trick is very expensive. Why uh, $50 for a download? Well, how much money will you do if you invest that? And if this would be a medical device, that will probably be $20,000. Right. So everything, you know, it's not what you buy, it's what you do with it. Exactly. Choose very wisely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why what I believe. Uh -huh. Yeah, I agree. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. I talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. Um, I think uh, Mark Salem says the same thing. Um, um, not, not only for um, as a backup, but also if you want to be a mentalist, the more knowledge you have of of other things, you never know when those things will come up in in the show, and you can say, "Oh, um, I don't have a I don't have a good example." But um, no, 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 no. It, it, you know listen, I mean? nothing yeah. beats experience. Right. But there's one yeah. another thing that I might must say, and I see a big difference between the this generation or my generation and even the generation before, like you know, the yeah. Di Vernon generation. Right. I was very right. fortunate to, to meet Di, Di, Di Vernon. Yeah. Yeah. Um I my, myself and, and most of my friends that I create with, we did everything in magic. Because we started young and we didn't know what we want to do, we tried it. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know nobody's going today and say I want to be a brain surgeon, and then he goes to do a course how to be a brain surgeon. You need to study a, 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 a anatomy. You need to study how to be a general doctor. You need to study so much before you even reach to right. touch somebody's skull. Right. And a lot of time this generation. They open YouTube, they buy something, a download, and they just look at it and they go and perform without the understanding yeah. of what is the effect, what I'm trying to do. Right. How, what is the psychology that my, my spectator is, is going to receive from me? Exactly. It, it, it's the same with acting. You can't just say, yeah. uh, oh, I'm a good actor because I know how to do a British accent and I can do, right. hello, dear. It's not going to make you a good actor. A good actor is going to make you with experience after you practiced and you went into many different roles and modalities and exercises of understanding right. how to go into a situation. Exactly. And then, you know, some actors, they go on stage and everybody else disappear. Why? And you will see that those are the little diamonds out there because they have experience and they took everything seriously. They worked yeah. hard. They sweat. Mm -hmm. I did illusions. I did dove manipulation. I was very good at that, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did comedy magic. I did birthday kids parties. I did walk around. I did, uh, you know, close-up shows. I did escapes. Yep. I so, did yeah. it all. Yeah. And I did yeah. mentalism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I chose to go this path when I was 18. So, mm -hmm. but... I did a lot, and you know, and then the next 10 years I did everything but mainly mentalism. You have to experience in order to excel. 
And don't just jump and say, I'm smart, I know what I'm doing. No. Audience yeah. are not stupid. Yeah. You know? A good yeah. promo video doesn't help you hold an audience for an hour. Exactly. It doesn't hold, help you reach the fifth row, not talking about the 30th row or those people sitting above there. You need experience and you need tools for that. And I think yeah. that's the biggest... Um, a recommendation I can make for mm. for those who wants to go into magic. Magic is not a trick. It's hard work. There's no real magic. It's hard work. It's is the one of the most hardest arts out there if yeah. you want to do it right. And um, you know, take what you want, leave what you don't. You might not disagree with me, and that's okay too. That's from my experience. I, I think it's really good advice uh, mm -hmm. for, for for anyone. Um, but, True. Uh, yeah. Um, so we're coming to the end of an hour now, and I'd like to ask. That was fast. Uh, I know it went very fast. Yeah. Um, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to? Talk about before we uh, move on. I do. I do magic for again. for for four and a half decades, so I can talk for hours. I think. Well, I think the most important thing is, of course, is <laughs> I think we covered a lot. I don't know. It's your show, but I think we covered a yeah, lot. I totally have. And it's you know, it's like reading a book. I, I'm not talking about a story, but even a story. But if you if you, it's a non-fiction fiction book. Right. Take what you want, leave what you don't right? Everybody will take something out of this. Even in my book that I wrote, I always tell people who buy my book. And I wrote a book for, not for magic, for, for the public, mm -hmm. uh, which is here somewhere. Oops, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I always say, take what you want, leave what you don't. But if you take only one thing yeah, yeah. and one thing only, mm -hmm. it's worth the price of the book. It's worth... 20 times the price of the book. I'm going to bring it here in case. Yeah, please. Because I saw you were yeah. zooming in. Here it is. Yeah. yeah. Smile for a change. It's it's nothing to do with magic. It's it's a book that talks about um, the importance of a smile and what 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 how the world's most favorite expression can affect our life. Yeah. And and smiling is one of the key factor in order to magnet people to you. And also to change the way that you feel and to change the way your environment feels. Yeah. And I, I, I wrote a few books. I only published one because the rest of them I never finished because I'm very busy. And I always say, ah, tomorrow, tomorrow, when I retire. But I'm not retiring. <laughs> so, um, uh, but, but I felt the importance to, to write this book because a simple smile does affect you and your yeah. surrounding. And if you think that uh, uh, first impression doesn't count, you are wrong. Yeah, it does. People judge you all the time. People judge you before they even get close to you. So the book has a lot of a lot of things, and you know everybody can get it in Amazon. Smile for a change. Uh, yeah. They can yeah. get it in Amazon or other bookstores or whatever, wherever they want, or on my website if they want me to sign it. Because oh. I'm not oh. sitting in Amazon warehouse. Right, <laughs> and I'm sorry, I I meant to let it down. Tell me your um, website again. And my website is masterofthemind.com. Right, that's what it's masterofthemind.com. But if you look for this in Amazon or you know Barnes and Nobles online or anywhere else, or I I book. Um, actually, now we we have also an audio book for this. For those who likes to ride bicycle and listen to the book, mm -hmm. so um, it's there. And if it's not there, it will be there soon. I mean, it should be there. Okay. Uh, but but there's no magic. There's no magic in it. So don't expect yeah. magic trick. Although I wrote it, <laughs> but there is the real secrets more important to magic, and it might be things that you already know based on 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 research research and facts and. Uh, and many other things. But sometimes we need to learn things that we forgot. 
And this mm. is something we have yeah. a, a power with us to, to do, and is to smile. Because when you smile, I don't care how you look, you look nicer and more beautiful, right? Yeah. Agree, agree. I actually had some practice. So. I had some practice smiling because my, my natural inclination growing up in New York was to not, not look at people and, and, and mind my own business. Because I grew up, I grew up in the 70s and um, New York was not a safe place. You know, so mm -hmm. I, it became, it became a, um, um, I guess it became innate to like not, not, not um, uh, connect with people. And um, mm -hmm. it, made, it made me sick, um, you know, not connecting with people. Um, and so I had to learn how to like look people in the eye and, and smile comfort, comfortably and not, not look like a, a psycho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you know, sometimes a smile is not always, and 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 I have it in the book. Um, the book, for example, talk about the uh, there's a chapter about the history of smile because mm -hmm. smile changed over the years. Wow. Ch smile changed lately because of the selfies, and there's different kinds of smile. There's a chapter talking about the the commonality and the difference of smiles between different cultures and countries. Mm -hmm. Smile mm -hmm. is a universal mm -hmm. language. But it also means different things in different cultures. So you mm -hmm. need to understand that. Um, smile is something that opens doors and can help you connect with people even before you start connecting with them. Nobody wants mm -hmm. to approach somebody that is frowning and angry and this. Right, right. But people want to connect with people that are more positive. And smile in our culture is, is, is bringing positivity and kindness. And everybody wants to talk to somebody that might see that he can help him or he can connect to them and not somebody that is like this, you know? Right. So there's different ways, different tools, different things in the book. But in general, you know, first impression does count. Smile is the most easy things you can do. And psychologically and physiologically proven that when you smile in less than five seconds, your endorphins will run to your brain and you will feel better and happier in less than five yeah. seconds. Yeah. It's absolutely natural. It costs you nothing. So why not doing it? And yeah. many people forget. And I saw this thing as a mission uh, for, 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 for the world, for the, for the community, for whoever want to take it to, you know, we have too much bad things happening in our world, especially the last two days, two years. Yeah. We need to remember yeah. the fundamental of the happiness that we have why we're here and why we need to be thankful for every day yeah. that we're here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I also heard that it takes fewer muscles to, in your face to smile to, than, it than to frown. To frown, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's, it's just a trigger and there's a lot, a lot behind it. I mean, everything is in the book. For whoever is interested or not interested, but uh, um, I just I, I I took it as a topic because uh, for me it was very important. I'm also I'm coming from Israel. It's a country that suffers a lot over the history, yet yeah, people are so happy yeah. there. People yeah. are in the streets yeah. and they're partying, and you know there's something there that that I, I you know and 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 everything starts from this. This is the where the funnel starts. Right. You know, you it's like a train. You start moving it, it will go no problem. So I think it's important. Yeah, it is, definitely. So um, finally, as we conclude, would you be willing to perform something for us? Uh, uh, to do something? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I can. I can try. I yeah. need to do it to you before I can do it to anybody else, right? Sure. Because yeah. <laughs> you're the only one here. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Let me see. Um, um, okay. All right. Let me do something very quick. 
I don't know if it's going to work or not work. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, I'm going to use my phone because I have nothing here to um, to write with. Okay, okay. here is my... Uh, let me put it so we can see it better, maybe. Uh, you can see my, my drawing board is here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We have Tommy here. I'm going to put Tommy. Okay, here it is. So, okay. Tommy. Yeah. Um, I want you, I just want to, I want to learn a little bit about you. Can you give me your favorite geometrical shape? But, you know, one of the simple ones, one out of the four simple ones, what will be your choice? You don't need to, to you can say it. I just want to learn a little bit about you. A tr triangle. Triangle? Triangle, right. yeah. I'm going to do a triangle here, okay? okay. So mm -hmm. a triangle, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, if I want you to tell me what's your favorite color? What could it be? Yellow. Yellow. Okay. Yeah. I put yellow here. Okay. So yellow is here. Very interesting. So it brings me to understanding, you know, a triangle is a very, you know, it's the most steady uh, um, symbol. It shows that you're very, you know, you're very strong person. You're always going to follow your 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 dreams, but nobody can break you down. You're a strong man, although you're very sensitive, because yellow is a very sensitive co uh, color. You know, it is the color of the sun, is the color of the energy. Energy is something that we take from everything else, but sometimes we take also the other side, the negativity from people. And I know mm -hmm. that you know what makes you very strong. You know, strong and sensitive. It tells me a little bit about you. Is that does it make sense or no? Yeah, it does. Okay. So I know a little bit about you. Now we'll, we'll do something that has no logic, but based on your on your criteria, I want to um I, I'm going to write something here. Um okay, I'm writing something here very quick. Uh, can you tell me a, a number between uh, 1 and 100? 98 98 interesting yeah. this is exactly what i wrote wow <laughs> and i tell you why i wrote this because as a sensitive person that overcome a lot in his life and i'm sure you did you are so strong and you know that you're not perfect <clears throat> you know that you're not a hundred but you always aim high you always want to be at the top and that's the reason why, why I wrote 98. And, and probably, you know, thank God I was right. That's maybe the reason why you said 98, because you always, you always aim for per perfection. And we all know that there is no perfect. So 98 is perfect. Wow. Thank you, Jan. That was great. <laughs> Oh, well, what a great, what a great show. Thank you guys for being my guest today. If, uh, my if pleasure. You can, if you can wait a few minutes um, so we can talk a little bit after sure. the show. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Guy Barkley, thank you, sir. Hey, thank you very much. Tony, uh, oh, it. thank uh, you so much, yeah. Tony. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, hope we, I didn't talk too much, but if I did, that's no, why we great. have the fast forward, great. right? Yes, it was great. Thank you. So, <laughs> Thank so you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, that was Guy Bosley. And I want to thank you for watching. Uh, next week, we have a young man who was recommended to me to be on the show by, by Jeff McBride. So, um... Um, I'm looking forward to that. His name is Spencer Schur. I've, I, I know very little about him, but um, I'm looking forward to talking with him. And um, yeah, so that's it. I remember the magic is in you. It is not in your props. And remember that and so I'll see you next time. Take care.